Hi there, welcome to this psychology topic video on biopsychology, this one looking at hemispheric lateralization, answering the exam questions. This video is one of three, and in part one we examine the definitions and key research, and in part three we will look at how to structure and write an essay on this topic. So let's take a look at the following three types of questions, looking at short answer, application and evaluation. The three questions we're going to focus on are the short answer question, briefly explain what split brain research has shown for four marks. The application question, split brain patients show unusual behaviour when tested in experiments, briefly explain how the unusual behaviour in split brain patients could be tested for two marks. And then the evaluation question, evaluate research using split brain patients to investigate hemispheric lateralization of function for four marks. Let's look at question one to briefly explain what split brain research has shown for four marks. The question you need to ask yourself are what are the most important words in this question? And for me, it's the words has shown. In a question like this, the words has shown indicates that you're talking about the results or findings and the conclusion. Okay. So model answer might start to look a bit like this. Split brain research has shown that when visual information is presented to the left visual field of a split brain patient, they cannot verbally describe what was shown and often report seeing nothing. So that's one half of the findings. However, when the information is presented to the right visual field of a split brain patient, they could describe what they saw. Now for a four mark question, I would always be asking myself, have I written enough to really secure all four marks? And therefore with this particular answer, I'd be tempted to go on and give the conclusion. This demonstrates the superiority of the left hemisphere when it comes to language production. So that's how I tackle that first question. Question two, the application question. Split brain patients show unusual behavior when tested in experiments. Briefly explain how unusual behavior in split brain patients could be tested in an experiment. Now, although it's only two marks, I've highlighted the word could be tested because this is quite a tricky question. And there are two logical suggestions that you can make when answering this type of question. You can talk about the stimulus or the materials that you would need to conduct the experiment or the task that the participants are required to do. So a model answer might look something like this. Split brain patients could be tested by presenting an image to the left or the right visual field. So notice straight away I'm talking about the stimulus that's required. The patient could then be asked to verbally state what they saw. Okay, And here I'm talking about the task for the participants. So just a nice easy way of picking up those two marks, talking about the stimulus or the task for the participants, or in this case both. Question three, the evaluation. Evaluate research using split brain patients to investigate hemispheric lateralization of four marks. Now what are the strengths and limitations of using split brain studies, like the study we encountered in the last video by Sperry and Gazinga? Well, they are highly controlled laboratory studies, which means we could replicate them, although there is a problem with replication that these patients are very, very rare. However, more realistically, these studies do lack ecological validity because presenting information to the left or the right visual field is very, very artificial. And in the real world, split brain patients use both of their eyes to compensate for the disconnection. So these studies are very, very artificial. On top of that, the studies had very, very limited sample sizes. The work by Sperry and Gazinga only had a sample of 11, and some psychologists said it was nothing more than a collection of case studies. In addition to that, the participants had epilepsy, which was why they had the surgery to begin with, and that limits the generalizability to a healthy population. In addition to that, some of the participants were still taking medication. And finally, the surgery was more severe in some of the patients than in others. So actually the severing of the corpus callosum was actually more or less severe, depending upon the, the type of epilepsy the person had. And again, this limits the generalizability of these findings. Okay, And there you have it. In this video, we've covered how to answer some of the exam questions for hemispheric lateralization. Hope you found that useful. Thank you.